Hello, I'm Toby from Technocamps, and I'm just making a quick video to show you how to use the bone tool. It's one of the more advanced skills WJC are looking for in the uh, Digitech animation courseworks. Um, and it's a little bit tricky, but we're going to go through it step by step, and hopefully it should start to make sense. First thing we're going to do for a blank uh, stage is grab the bone tool itself. If you go to the three little dots at the bottom of our tools, um, you should see the bone tool there. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to grab that and drag that on to our toolbar. OK, um, just clicking away to close the extra little menu. Um, from here, we can begin. So before we can start rigging up a character using our bone tool, we are going to need to draw one. Um, there's a few different ways to do this, um, but the way I'm going to show you how is on a single layer, I'm going to create representations of the various body parts. Now, if you're doing this for real, you may well want to actually draw in detail the different body parts. Um, in my case, I'm just going to use some shapes. Um, so I'm drawing a big uh, kind of oval here to represent the torso. Uh, then I've got an upper arm and a forearm. And I'm going to have the same thing on the other side. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste And I'm just going to flip those around. So I get them exactly how I want. And I'm going to do the same thing with the legs. So that's going to be my um, upper leg. And this will be my kind of shin. And again, I'm going to want to copy those to get them the same on each side. But again, this is just me demonstrating for the sake of simplicity. Um, you can use shapes for a bit of practice before you use your act before you make your actual character. OK, and of course, we're probably going to want a head. So let's just have ahead. So not the most realistic looking person, but some semblance of one there. Um, once we've got our shapes, and the reason why I have separated them out like this is because when we have shapes on the same layer, where they overlap, they will combine and will kind of eat into each other. Um, but we don't want that. We want these to be their own kind of separate um, entities, their own separate objects, so that when we have our character moving around, there's not just holes being bitten out of our character as the limbs kind of rotate. Um, so we prepared our bone tool. So we're just going to grab that one now. And starting from the center of mass, which in this case is the, uh, the, our torso or our body, click and drag out to where one of the joints would be. So I'm going to start at the shoulder. And then I've let go. And now I can see those two pieces have combined together. And if I look at my timeline down at the bottom, I can see the armature layer has been formed. So as we um, start piecing our character together, the pieces will combine onto that layer and they'll get removed from this layer one, which they were on originally. OK, so by repeating this process, I can start to join up the various limbs. Making sure I drop the bone tool where I would expect the joint to be. If you have really little shapes, it can start to get a bit fiddly. So sometimes it's good to make a nice big character and then shrink them down to the size you actually want them to be when it comes to doing the animation. 
Okay, so I have rigged up my character, but of course it still does not look quite like a person. Um, so we need to move the limbs into place. Uh, the way we're going to do that is with this tool, the free transform tool. You click off so you don't have everything highlighted. And then one at a time, drag those into position. So it can be a little bit fiddly again. So just take your time, get it how you're happy. So I'm realizing the proportions of my person is uh, more like a baby, but that's okay. And my legs are gonna go a little bit off, but again, that's okay. Cause I'm gonna shrink, I'm gonna shrink my person down. I've just made them nice and big. So it's easy for you to see. And it's uh, in fact, easier for me to assemble. I can't quite get this limb to go where I want. So I'm just gonna select it and use the arrow keys to more precisely control it into position. Okay. So, oh, I have one more to do, which is the head. So I'm gonna plonk that down. So it's at the, uh, on the neck there. Um, I've got the body rigged up now. Um, I do think it's a little bit big, so I'm going to grab the whole thing. So I could highlight the whole thing, or I could click on the layer. Um, and using the big box around the outside, I can control um, the size. And of course, it all changes size altogether. Um, so that's quite convenient. Okay. Something you may need to do um, is with the torso selected is turn off rotation. So it's on, I've just turned it on. Um, if you have it turned on, you may well get something like this. That is not necessarily something you want, um, but that can be prevented by, as I say, selecting the torso itself and then turning off joint rotation. So everything that is connected to the torso, every joint there is not gonna be able to rotate in that way I just demonstrated. Rather, we get this much nicer rotation at the joints as we might expect. Um, however, we still have a bit of a problem that we can make, we can do this kind of thing, which we may well, not want to happen because it, it just doesn't look right. So we can constrain the rotation. So that means we can control exactly how far around those joints can rotate. And the way we can do that is by selecting the joint we want to restrict, going over to our object properties and where we have joint rotation, there's a little box that says constrain. We can put a tick in there and this will be the number of degrees that that joint can rotate to. With our constraint set, if we then try to rotate our joint, we get a limited range of motion. And you don't always need to do that, um, but it can certainly help in making your character seem a little, just a little bit more realistic. I'm gonna set a couple of constraints on my character just by clicking on the various joints that I might want to constrain. And the default 45 degrees both ways, so a total of 90 degrees of rotation is reasonable for both purposes. If we wanted to constrain these end joints, we don't actually have a, a kind of bone to click, but if we just select the, um, the limb itself, we can constrain it. And we'll get the same effect. So we've come this far, we've got our character rigged up, we've got the joints restricted as we might like, so they can move in slightly more human ranges of motion. But now we actually want to do something with our character, we want to animate our character. So the next step is, um, and if you've used the bone, uh, the, 
if you've used the motion tween before, then this will be quite a similar process. We're going to add some frames on our armature layer. So I'm going to hold click on my add keyframe button and go to frames. And I get this nice green bar on my timeline. So this represents the uh, animations of the armature. What I'm going to try and make is a, a kind of waving animation. His hand, I want my character's uh, hand to kind of wave a little bit. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to my first frame and I'm going to drag his hand up to the top. And then maybe every 10 frames, I'm going to move his arm slightly out to the side. And then, of course, back again. So if I do this um, a few times. So moving along 10 frames each time on my timeline, I'm dragging the limb I want to move to get it to uh, the position I want. Once I have um, set these uh, motion points up, on my timeline, you can see as I click between them, it's going to the various positions. But of course, um, because we've used the bone tool, it has animated the gaps in between. So I've got this quite sweet little hand waving animation. Uh, after the last motion point, it's not going to do anything because I've not given it any additional instructions. So unless I give it another motion point, it will just hold on the last frame um, for all subsequent frames. And that might be something you want, or it might not be. Um, so we can do more than just animate the limbs. We can also have the whole character move. Um, and it can get, this again can get a little bit fiddly, um, but as long as you're not doing anything fantastically complicated, it should go okay. So let's say, I now wanted my character to move over to the right. So in the last 20 frames, um, I'm going to move my character to the right. I am going to go to my free transform tool again and click and drag the whole character. So if it doesn't automatically highlight the whole thing, again, I could do that myself or click on the layer and that will select everything on the layer. If I drag my character over to the side, it will animate that movement for me. I can even combine different animations together. So I've got that left to right animation, but let's say I wanted my character to do a kind of um, star jump to the side, maybe. I could set that up. So starting from the beginning, my character's gonna have a little wave and then bound off to the side. So that about covers all of the important details with the bone tool. Um, as I say, it can be very fiddly. The one golden piece of advice I would give you is make sure before you start animating your character using the bone tool, make sure you are absolutely happy with what they look like what the limbs look like, how it's assembled, because if you start animating and then want to go back and change part of it, that can prove to be challenging. It's not impossible, but it's very, very challenging because when you change, say, the size of limbs uh, retroactively, it's going to start to interfere with the subsequent animation. This has been Toby from Technocamps, hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, I'm going to be making a, a few videos in a series of the hardest parts of the uh, WJC digital tech animation spec. Um, so if you still want some more tips, look for those other videos. Goodbye.